Good morning and welcome to Blue Rock Adventures. I'm Chris. I wanted to make a video about our first 100 hours using our new Ponga. But first I just wanted to thank all of you for watching these videos and subscribing to our channel. We really appreciate it. Uh, we're glad you're enjoying it and we're going to try to bring you as much uh, info and discussion about the Ponga as we can and we appreciate your questions and we try to answer each and every one so I just wanted to give you a heartfelt thank you for for joining us and uh, and being here with us okay so I'm gonna start at the front of the boat here I think to to kind of tell you uh, you know how it's going after a hundred hours uh, on the water with the boat or nearly 100 hours so one thing that we found out uh, here where we live in southern Baja California where it's really warm this time of year, the water's warm also, you know, the water's about uh, 87 degrees, 86 degrees, somewhere around there. The daytime temperatures are, you know, in the mid to upper 90s, high humidity. So, you know, when we first started fishing, maybe it was about, uh, I guess, uh, two or three months ago now, we were using our fish box and we were just throwing ice in there and even some of our drinks and stuff like that uh, and maybe a couple of bottles of water frozen in the in the big fish box we have which I'll show you in just a second and the problem we had was that gosh by just uh, you know 9 a.m. 10 a.m. most of the ice had already melted and it was still you know kind of cold water in there but nowhere near as cold as you would want it to be so here's our fish box our fish box is nice and large you know it's about um, close to five feet wide so we catch some really big dorados or big yellowtail or something like that it's great to have it uh, but what we've decided to do temporarily is or on most days is we take out our big 120 quart cooler and that just works so much better for holding ice you know a lot of times uh, if we don't catch much fish or any fish which happens uh, to us all uh, we could reuse the ice on the next trip I mean it's it's that good even at even after seven hours or so is usually probably how long we we're gone from the house maybe eight hours and there's still plenty of ice left and so the cooler has just been a much better option for us so I'll kind of show you where we stow that so what we did is we just put this cooler uh, right here uh, you know on the deck just in front of the t-top and the center console and between the fish box there's a, a decent amount of space here and we don't really have to pass by here too much so you can see that you know we got this old cooler we've had this cooler for I don't know 20 years or something like that it's nothing special but it's perfect for the putting fish in right so um, we don't my wife and I don't really need to pass by here that much so it hasn't been a problem to take up this deck space because we mostly spend the time at the rear of the boat so you know it's just been so much better for keeping ice and it'll hold a fish up to about I think about 36 inches long which most of the Dorado we've been catching here lately have, have fit in here. Maybe you have to bend them in a little bit, but they've been fitting in here. And then it, it just keeps the ice so much better. So, you know, I think unless we catch a, a really big fish that we're just going to keep using the cooler. And then if it, uh, we get a, a really nice one, then we'll throw that in the big fish box and we'll just pile the ice in there and we'll uh, deal with it that way. Okay, the next area I wanted to talk to you about after a hundred hours of use is the uh, electrical system. So, you know, we have our electrical system here in the center console. Everything in the center console works just great. It's actually worked out just beautiful, but Maybe one thing I would say is that, you know, I bought two 100 amp hour AGM batteries and they're about 200 bucks a piece. I use one uh, for the motor and the instrumentation for the motor only. And then another one for as the house battery that controls uh, the lights, the LED lights that we have, 
the bilge pump, the live well pump, the GPS uh, fish finder unit, and the radio, basically. So, in all honesty, you know, we don't use the lights very much at all. We pretty much leave, you know, a little before uh, daylight, but I'm usually all prepped the night before, and maybe I add a few things in the morning, but that's here in the garage where I have lights, so we hardly ever use the lights. Um, and this time of year, we're mostly trolling chuggers and feathers and lures, stuff like that, so we're not using the live well either. So really the only electrical loads we have are just the fish finder, the radio, and the bilge pump occasionally. So I'm probably, you know, way over what I need on these uh, batteries, which is kind of the way I live my life. You know, I like to be really prepared for everything. But I would say, you know, it's probably just overkill and you don't need to, that much electricity on your boat or that much battery power on the boat. Probably it could all run fine from one of these batteries, but you know, I just wanted to err on the side of safety. I wanted a dedicated battery for the motor. I didn't want to suck juice off of that, even though it's being constantly recharged by the motor. And we run the motor basically 100% of the time when we're out fishing. Still, I wanted to separate the systems, which I did, and it, all, it works wonderfully, but to be honest, it's probably way overkill for our needs and a place where someone could save a little bit of money um, if they wanted to, right? So it all depends on your use and uh, how much electrical things you're going to have on your boat or electronics or, you know, lighting or and how much you use them uh, should dictate that. But for us, it's overkill, but you know what? I never have to worry about having enough uh, battery power to, for the day. So and we're totally happy with that. Okay, now I'm sitting here at the helm in the captain's seat. And I wanted to talk to you about a few of the things here. Uh, maybe one of the things that's worked out really good is, you know, when we first uh, installed the motor and the steering, the steering was pretty darn stiff. And, uh, and that has loosened up a lot after 100 hours, which is just great. I mean, it's just right now, it'll pretty much hold position no matter what's happening in the water. Um, but it feels a lot easier to move, especially maybe for my wife. But uh, so I'm real happy about that, that they kind of broke in and it feels right and uh, my wife can easily maneuver the boat so so that's worked out really well uh, the other thing is you know we're kind of these Suzuki controls from our DF90 Suzuki outboard uh, they're taking a little getting used to you know I, I'm suppose on any boat you have to get used to the way the throttle response and the travel of the stick and all that so we're each getting used to it over time um, it's not the smoothest uh, thing in the w world and also there's kind of some uh, long travel involved in some of it but you do get used to it over time and overall I got no complaints on the controls for the motor so very happy with that the next item is probably our Lowrance Elite TI uh, 7 inch fish finder GPS unit and you know I'll be honest with you, <laughs> when we when we got it and installed it, um, you know, I've used fish finders before, and that's basically what I got it for. You know, the GPS is nice to have, but we're pretty much always inside the land. It's not that super important for us to have GPS, um, you know, safety aside, right? But now, you know, as we get out there and we want to mark spots, waypoints for fishing, and maybe some rocks and stuff that are uh, potentially dangerous, it's worked out really good and over time you know we've learned how to use it because I didn't sit down and I did watch a few videos but it was a while back when I was kind of researching getting the the unit and you know that stuff doesn't stay with you very good uh, if I'm honest and when I got the book the book is uh, not that you know big but I just didn't spend a lot of time studying you know that that's the bottom line I just didn't do a lot of time studying and we've sort of been learning Kind of over this time as we go and it has a lot of features that are really great uh, some of the the uh, directions that it will give you to your waypoints are super nice uh, makes it really easy to get to your location 
and the fish finder works uh, pretty darn good but it does get a lot of disturbance um, if we go you know even at trolling speeds maybe uh, eight or nine knots it seems to have a lot of disturbance and, and that's probably my fault I probably mounted the transducer maybe a little too high maybe it needs to go down into the water just a little bit more um, you know when we're going slow or on a spot it, it works just fine but at the uh, little higher speeds uh, it has a lot of trouble there's a lot of noise on the screen so you know that's probably something I could improve upon it just needs some minor adjustment I think but overall I'm really happy with that the GPS system uh, works really good the waypoints are super easy it's just you know one button push for to put in a waypoint and then you can name them how you want and you know the fish finder technology is you know right up there so you know overall we're super happy with the Lawrence unit uh, gives us a lot of peace of mind when we're out on the water and, and a lot of great information so you know that that's real good super happy with that the other thing I might mention while we're sitting here is the t-top and you know really happy with the t-top So, you know, it provides a really nice shade uh, for us. It, it's, you know, probably meant for a boat with a little more beam on it, but it, it provides really nice shade for us. And, you know, once the sun gets up, maybe at 10 o'clock in the morning, 1030, it's just perfect. We can find enough shade that's very comfortable, even in a really hot place like we live. Uh, the one thing I would say about it is that it has maybe a, a little more wobble to it than I would love. I was kind of worried at first, you know, as you're out there pounding through the the wakes and uh, the chop on the water that, you know, maybe over time that might kind of loosen it up or it might uh, damage something. But you know what, so far it seems just fine. I mean, it does have a little wobble, but it seems fine. I don't see any places where it's uh, overly stressed or anything like that. So, you know, I think I paid around $500 on Amazon for it. And for that price, yeah, I'm, I'm real happy with it. Okay, let's talk about the seating arrangement. You know, overall, for my wife and I, this seating arrangement has worked out really super good. Um, you know, because we can both face forward when we want to here, when we're heading out to the fishing grounds. And then, you know, because they swivel and around, you know, we can just turn around and look backwards as we're trolling and we can watch our lines and our lures. And for the two of us, it works out great. Um, you know, for more than two of us, uh, like I've said in past videos, you know, we didn't really plan a lot for extra people on the boat. Probably we should have, but we didn't. Um, but it's usually my wife and I. And so these seats, and these were cheap. I think they were a hundred bucks for the pair, or 129, something like that for the pair. And put them on the swivels here on the bench, and you know, it works out really good. So I'm really happy with that. A lot of times too, just for a different seating position, we'll sit on the side of the gunnel there and that's comfortable also. And then, you know, when you want a little more cushion, then we'll sit back in the seats. So yeah, I, you know, for, I really like the seating arrangement and, and so does the wife. So that's worked out just great. And I don't see uh, any reason why uh, we would change it or do anything different. Okay, moving a little more rearward in the boat here. I wanted to talk to you guys about the sea deck product that we put inside the boat you know overall we're super happy with the sea deck stuff because one of the first things we do when we get in the boat is take off our shoes and, uh, you know, on other boats, I really haven't been able to go barefoot too much. Uh, just got too hot or it was too slippery. But this stuff is just great. And it provides just, just that little bit of cushion to take some of the fatigue off your feet. You know, it's not quite as hard as some boats with just a, uh, you know, a hard surface on there, even if it's textured. It just adds that little bit of cushion, which is really nice and really comfortable. Um, 
the only downside to it that we've found so far is come about maybe 11 o'clock in the morning, you know, once the sun starts to get up and there's not much shade on the floor here, it does get hot. I mean, we, we got this blue color and it comes in, I don't know, you know, seven or eight, nine, ten colors. Um, so maybe a lighter color um, would be better, but it gets hot. I mean, it gets so hot uh, by, say, noon or so that we put our shoes or our flip-flops back on because it, it's just too hot uh, to walk on. So that would be my only complaint about it. Otherwise, it's been great. You know, the adhesive hasn't pulled up anywhere. Um, it, it cleans really good, um, and it provides, you know, that little bit of cushion, and it's and the non-slip is amazing. I mean, you just really feel sure-footed on here at all times and you know all the blood and you know the stuff from your feet uh it all cleans up pretty well on this uh you know the, with a little bit of maintenance and get out a bucket a mop a you know a brush and uh give it a good cleaning with some soap and water and it comes out really good so i'd highly recommend it we really liked it it's worked out good for this hundred hours like there's no uh, wear or tear really to speak of so you know really happy with that So probably the last thing I wanted to update you guys on here was the our Suzuki outboard. It's a DF 90 horsepower, brand new. We bought it with zero hours. Uh, right now it's sitting uh, just about at 100 hours of use. Um, and it's been great, to be honest. I mean, it's super quiet, very fuel efficient, and, you know, it just runs perfect. I mean, I, we've had absolutely no problems, which I guess you would expect, right, out of a brand new outboard. Um, you know, no outboard is cheap, that's for sure. Um, so you expect it to be good, right? And and this one is, I, I would say that, uh, you know, there's only one thing. I used to have a boat with uh, two Yamaha 115s on it, and they were like uh, 2006 year models. And the only thing that they had on there that I liked a little bit better than the Suzuki was the it's a small thing but it's uh, the where you did the hose connection for the fresh water uh, cleanup at the end of the day you know running through the engine so I'll, I'll kind of show you what we got on this boat okay I'll do my best to kind of show you what I'm talking about here but on this uh, Suzuki DF90 it's got a connection for a, a hose, a freshwater hose, at the front of the motor. So I'll kind of give you a little view of that right here. I think you can see it, but this little deal here, plug, you turn, and it's threaded, and then, you know, it's threaded for a male hose. So, you know, that, that's nice and everything, but the problem is, you know, you got a hose, it, you can't turn the end, you know, of the hose, right? Maybe, maybe you can, I guess, if you've got certain fittings, but the average garden hose, you can't turn the male fitting. So it makes a, a little bit of a pain. So what I did to make it a little easier is I made this hose here. I'll try to show you, but I just made a short hose that has a male and a female fitting on it and then what i'll do is i'll install that which i'll kind of show you if i can here kind of show you so what i'll do is i'll just take this little short piece of hose like 18 inches and i'll just screw that in this side the male fitting into the motor there we go Okay, and then now I've just got this fitting here, the female end, which is movable, and now it's really easy to screw onto the hose. So it wasn't that big a deal, but on the Yamaha, it already comes with kind of a short hose. It's a small diameter, but it comes with a short hose with a fitting like this. So all you have to do is just plug your hose into it and just screw it on there and go. So it's a bit simpler, a uh, bit better solution, I think, on the Yamaha. But that's really my only complaint about the Suzuki to date. You know, it's run just like a champ. It's super quiet too, quieter than the Yamaha, I think. So, and that's great for us, you know, doing videos. The other thing I would say about the 
Suzuki ownership is that on the gauge, the RPM gauge, it has uh, some, you know, what some people call idiot lights or your warning lights, right? Telling you when um, you need service, tells you if there's issues, temperature, oil pressure, stuff like that. And so they have one on there uh, that tells you about oil changes. Uh, the computer tells the gauge there when you're close to 100 hours for your 100 hour services. And it went on off on us the other day. And we have uh, quite a bit less than 100 hours since the first oil change, which was done at around 20 hours by the dealer who sold us the engine. And I saw that they reset the computer. And, you know, I asked them if I needed to make the next oil change at 100 hours exactly or at 120 hours because they had just done the service at 20 hours. And they said, no, at 120 hours. Uh, total you should be doing your oil change so the last time we went out the oil light started flashing and that's to let us know that hey, you know it's time for an oil change uh, the thing is though we only have about 70 hours at the time on there so you know first it kind of scared me out on the water we're out there fishing and then you see the oil light and you know since it's a new motor I wasn't totally up on all of the what all the lights mean and all that. Hey, I figured it out in just a short period of time that it was just uh, letting us know that it's time for an oil change. But I think, you know, letting you know 30 hours before you need to do it is probably, uh, you know, a bit, a bit much. I, I, I don't understand why they would put it out so far in front. Obviously, you want a little time if you're relying on that to be able to, you know, plan your oil change, but I think 30 hours is too much. So that would be my only other complaint about the thing is that maybe the service lights uh, could be a little bit more accurate to what your actual use is. And and I'm meticulous about writing down, you know, all the hours on the boat every time we go out. So I'm, I know exactly where the hours are at all times. So anyway, I think that's all about I've got to say about our Suzuki DF90 other than we love it. Okay, to kind of wrap things up on our Ponga uh, update after 100 hours, I just want to say, you know what, we're, we're thrilled. Uh, there's not been a single leak. Uh, I haven't seen a drop of water, not one single drop in the bilge area. So we're really happy with the hull itself has, has worked out really good. And everything that we did to the boat to rig it up for fishing and stuff has worked great. The motor's great. You know, so overall we're, we're you know, 100% happy with everything that we've done and the way everything is going so far. And so we wanted to let you guys know, maybe there's some uh, good information there for you. But uh, we really appreciate you watching and we hope you'll think about subscribing if you haven't already. And uh, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for joining us. Take care. Bye-bye.